Welcome back to another video guys. Today I will be replacing the serpentine belt and I have the belt tensioner as well. Right here. Let's open that up. This guy here. I know mine is broken because when I did the engine swap, I wasn't sure how this works, so I snapped the little square over here. But anyways, I'm gonna replace the tensioner. I'm going to place a serpentine belt and also I'm going to install an oxygen sensor spacer. So basically what this spacer does is when you install um, the spacer and then you put the oxygen sensor on top of it, you have that space between the catalytic converter and the oxygen sensor itself. And somehow that trips, or not even trips, that just fools the ox oxygen sensor by um, you know, thinking the cat is all right, but in reality, it's below spec. That way, you don't get your check engine light, and yeah, you don't have to spend much money. But it might fail in e tests, but I highly doubt there's a spec for the catalytic. If it goes below uh, specs, it just has to be replaced. And this is one way to cut it off is by installing the spacer. So, I'll be replacing the serpentine belt, the idler. Uh, the belt tensioner and I will install the spacer for the oxygen sensor as well so let me lift up the car and then we will get started all right so basically the serpentine belt is what connects your engine to your accessories so your power steering your pump your AC and everything else. And what causes the tension on it is the tensioner, which is what we're gonna replace right there. I don't know if you can see it. So we're gonna replace that tensioner. As you can see, it's broken. All right, so I managed to expose the, the bolt a little bit so I could fit a um, a ratchet because it wouldn't fit before so what I did is I took off the motor mount here and I lowered the engine and then I loosened the front subframe mount which is behind this plastic here the bolt is out but it's still stuck and it's hitting the frame so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the belt that way it releases all the tension from it and then that way I could do it there we go, and here it comes. So this is the old piece. As you can see, it's cracked here. And I think it's time for a new belt and belt tensioner. So that is the new one. That is the new belt. Let's go ahead and install it. Alright, so that literally took me about an hour just to get the serpentine belt in. Uh, it's really hard if you don't have uh, another person helping you out because you need to put the pressure on the belt tensioner and then you align the, the belt itself. So I don't have anybody at the moment with me, so I have to do it all myself. This is the old belt here. I cut it to release tension. And yeah, so what I did, I took off the motor mount here. I released the subframe a little bit and then I accessed the bolt from the side for the tensioner and then I installed it and um, from the top as you can see here I have my long wrench into it and yeah I just pretty much finished so I'm gonna put back everything in place and then uh, should be good to go all right everything here is back in place the serpentine belt is in place I didn't feel much because I couldn't, it was, uh, it was a very tight spot and I had to do a lot of things by myself, especially releasing the tension and putting the belt on is not easy, you know, on this engine at least. So I'm going to put the wheels on, uh, jack up the car and install the oxygen sensor extender. Alright, so the oxygen sensor that I'm going to change is, I'm not actually changing it, I'm just taking this off. And then I'm going to put the extender and put the oxygen back 
This is our bank two, I believe, because I don't see any other sensors. Usually bank two is the last sensor. The one at the top is the first bank, and then this is the second bank. And the code that I'm getting is bank two, catalytic below threshold. So I'm gonna take this off, put the extender, and put it back. So it's a 22 socket or a 22 wrench. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty hard, so I'm gonna have to put a little bit of force into it. So as you can see, there's an opening from one side for the oxygen to get in and for the sensor to read. And the other side is just where the oxygen threads in. So, so that's gonna go. So this is basically how you put it in. Just come here and thread it like as if you're threading an oxygen sensor. And there it is. That should take off the engine light, hopefully. I've noticed on the RX-8 this doesn't work properly, but um, I think on regular piston engines this should be fine. So I installed that and yeah, hopefully that takes off the check engine light. So usually you would do this when you have um, a code in your in your system that says catalytic below threshold which means your catalytic converter needs to be replaced in some cases what you could do is install this bunger or it's called defouler or um, non-fouler or check engine light remover or oxygen sensor extender and what this does is extends the oxygen sensor but there's still some oxygen going to the oxygen sensor which thinks that you know everything is fine the system's getting oxygen and blah 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 anyways thanks for watching and i hope this video helps somebody out there